repeat one or two things. I'm going to start this right now. All right. So the first measurements we did is that we saw that Harry is vertically uh, can be divided up into four segments showing the different parts of her body. We've got her legs here, her nose here, uh, the beginning of this little white divot down here, and then the top of her head. So I can randomly draw a line. I'm not trying to match this distance to this one. In fact, I think this one is longer, but I'm proportionally wanting to divide it up the same way. So once I randomly decide this, I divide this into quarters, we have also seen that if I draw this little envelope shape of Harry, kind of this shape, this misshapen kite, that um, that the length of this line, if I go and I picked this distance because I wanted to go to the farthest, see how far this is, would go to the width, see so the end of the ear. I can measure this and see that this length is basically three quarters of this length. So I can come in here and do that measurement again. Look, if I try to do this here, it won't work. It's too big. See, this is three quarters. That doesn't work. It won't work to translate this to here. It's too big. But if I check my three quarters, I should be able to, oh, and this should be up a little bit higher. It shouldn't be at the quarter point. It should be a little bit higher, right? So. So I'm starting this line just above the quarter point, this much. Um, and, uh, and then we further found out when we started measuring that this distance from here to here is about one quarter. So I can measure that here. Yep. And that the distance from here to here is two quarters or halfway. So now I have my grid, and even though these aren't the same size, they are proportionally the same. So I think that's the biggest thing people struggle with, is understanding how to create that, those proportions correctly. So this is how we do it. Um, and then we're gonna start with these outer shapes here. So here, I'm going to Take a picture of this cow. So you've got the biggest one. And but before, don't worry, we will, here we are. So notice that this line goes to the widest edge and it's a bit above this quarter point here. So it's not at the quarter point, it's just above. So when I start to sketch, I know kind of how far I need to go, right? If I go any farther than this, I'm gonna be going too far. I'm be going too far. And then this kind of comes down to just before this quarter point. And then it turns in like that. And this just goes angled straight in. So there we have a kind of misshapen kite. Why do we sketch this in? Because it helps keep our proportions correct. It helps keep us, yep. So I'm just double checking, yep. So nothing goes further. We know that the whole cow, because we've drawn this little special squashed kitey envelope <laughs> in on this cow. So. So that's the first step. While you guys do this, let me sketch in the other steps. So you can see that once again, I'm kind of starting with the outside shapes. Why? Because I can. <laughs> and then here and here. Here, here. Sometimes it's good to divide things into like pieces, like puzzle pieces, like puzzle piece shapes here. So I'm gonna do that for you. 
Notice how teeny tiny her legs are. Also, I'm gonna sketch this. This is her mouth. It's a little bit hard to see the bottom of her mouth, that line right here, I'm sketching that in. Look at how little her proportions are. I mean, her head is like three quarters of the picture. So that's a really good thing to be thinking about when you're dealing with perspective issues. Here she is kind of rearing towards us, like coming towards us. So everything here is quite big. This is actually her body. This is her whole body. <laughs> like all you can see is like this little bit. Um, and it's about the size. And here are her legs. They're less than a, just a tiny bit less than a quarter, really. So this is, I think what ends up happening is, you know, you think these should be bigger because the body's so much bigger than the head. But in this particular perspective, it's all about the head. Boy, these are great. I'm still looking at your landscapes, Marie, from yesterday's class. Okay, did I take a picture of that? Come on, get there. Easily distracted today. No, yes. Okay. Uh, so, the sunsets. Yeah, they just really turned out great. I know. They do so, they're doing good. Um, okay, so now I am, you know what? I'm gonna switch these around. The reason I am is that I like to have my source on my left so I can use my non-dominant hand to kind of point where I need to go. Now you of course may not be able to do that, right? Uh, yeah. Because you guys don't have it printed out, but I certainly will always model. Oops, and I can see that this cow head kind of comes to the left of the center line here. It doesn't, and in fact, as I go further. So notice I'm not getting. So this comes to about here before we get that triangle. And then you'll notice there's another triangle that comes almost to this edge. So now we have horn, side of head and ear. Does that seem right? It does. I'm still not convinced this is an, I may end up moving this a little bit. I'm not so convinced I've got that shape right. I think this one feels right to me. Okay, and then just to get further down here, this kind of angles in a little bit. And notice how I've created, there's this little triangle basically right here. If I wanna know where to stop, I can see that if I like, I've gone in a little too far, that this line, if I put my pencil up here, kind of lines up with the tip of the, can you see that how it's lining up with the tip of the horn, not down here, but up here. So if I come any farther, I might have to go down a bit. Uh, and let's see, I'm just debating. And then up from here, this might be the hardest piece to get right. Nope, I brought it down too far. Is this helpful, you guys? It's yep, not bad, I, is it? Yeah, I'm using it on my phone and I'm just looking at all your lines that you've done because they're a lot clearer. Yep, yep. Yes, that's the idea is that's why I'm doing it with you. I want you to use the lines. I did kind of draw across. I technically don't like you to do that, but I think it helps. And then, oh, look, here's another kind of triangle that comes right down here. So this is the leg. 
oops, I want it to come a little bit to the right, to the left. And the reason I know that is that I can see that the leg kind of is just lined up here and comes out like this. So super helpful, right? Yep. Okay. Still looks a little bit weird, might have to adjust these. But the nice thing about this technique is that it allows you to make those fixes as you lay things out. We don't have enough information here really yet. So now I'm going to the other side here and I'm coming up there. So there's this other triangle. I think the hardest shape for me is getting like the top of the head right because it always looks too bumpy. Yeah, don't worry so much about that. Just worry about where it starts and ends. Don't worry so much about the head. Okay, now one of the things, ah, I see what's happening here. So one of the things that's a little bit tricky to see here and what makes this complicated is there's a bit of ear like this. So the face is actually gonna come in. There's this tiny little triangle, dark triangle of ear on this side. It's a little tricky to see. And then right here at this line, at the quarter line, we do a little line in straight down and then out. See, so it's like three straight lines at angles. Once again, it looks kind of awkward right now because we haven't drawn the inside lines yet. And then right below, and then here, what we're dealing with this, right? There is, so here is a little bit of the mouth and then, oh, here we go. Sorry, I covered up too much actually. So the mouth kind of comes in like this and then the, this leg that's bent is like this shape. Oops, way too big. So notice how easy it is to go too big. Notice how, I know I, I'm like on you guys about this a lot, but that's only because I do it too. <laughs> that makes you feel better, easier. Oops. So that's the whole uh, left leg there kind of maybe down a little bit further. And the right leg is really just kind of on that size. <laughs> he looks like he's doing a little tap dance. Who oh, let me entertain you. She, sorry. And then of course there's the inside lines. Let's see if I got a better color. Ugh, that's just terrible to see. Let's see, let's try this red now. And notice at this point, I'm also sort of circling some of the dark and light areas for you to mark in. Notice I'm kind of only, I might have to, well, we've got a copy of this so we can look at it again without all these marks on it. I know it's marking off some of the things here, I'm gonna take a picture of this. And now we have a pretty, it's much easier to make sure you're kind of getting things in the right shapes. Here. Dang it, come here, what's up?
So now I can, I know the nose kind of ends at the halfway point minus this little triangle here. Hold on and I will take a look. As soon as I finish my own drawing, I will take a look. Notice I'm kind of readjusting the angle on this. So now that starts to look a little better. Notice that this triangle, this kind of looks like a little mountain is kind of more on this side. Than on this one, this is a really much wider nose. If you want to, you can do some checking, right? Like on the widest part of the nose, you can be like, okay, that's about, that comes up to about here. So check the nose. So once you've started establishing points, you can use them to help you figure out where things are. Okay, this is going to be tricky. So this comes in. This comes straight and then down like that. So this is the body, basically, <laughs> this little bit, which is pretty much the size of the nose. Yep, that's about right. Whole body right here. Here's the ear. The ear is huge. The eye kind of comes right at the quarter point, sort of middle. I'm only doing the outside edge right now. Now I'm bringing that in. So notice how big the ear is. I can still, I can kind of, uh, I think I needed to bring it at an angle a little bit more, but basically it stays in the same place. It's kind of more of a, um, just a slightly more of an angle than it really is. Same here. So I'm kind of coming around the outside here when I get to the eye to get that really proper crazy cow business. Yeah. <laughs> I just think this is so cute. <laughs> And now I can start to add in, I know that this sort of white point here stops right at the last quarter point. I can see it comes up past the horns. So see, I'm not so worried about detail. Oh, and by the way, one of the things that you guys are gonna be totally stoked about is fairly quickly in this process, I'm going to allow a smaller brush. Mm -hmm because you definitely need it for animals. There's definitely, and I'm just sketching in the light, medium and dark of the eyes. And then you'll notice the um, nostrils, look at, you know, the nose has this wonderful, she's got just this gorgeous dark light divide, which is what makes Harry so much fun to paint. She's got some really great variation here. Uh, a couple of things to be aware of. Notice that the, no the nostrils aren't like at the same distance from the center line. The nostril here is farther away than the nostril here, which is kind of right up close to the center line. So notice that. Notice that the nostril is really in several places. Okay, so now I'm ready to start looking at what you guys have. So go ahead and start sending it in when you're ready here. I'm gonna take a picture of this so you can see little tap dancing Harry. So there's like, she's got her little, this is the bottom of her mouth. I think I've got that down too far. I kind of covered this up. And then there's a little kind of gullet, her little hanging below, kind of in between her legs. 
And you can see the kind of top joint and then the bottom joint. You can also see that her legs are kind of white up here and right at the knee, they get rounded and dark and then it gets a little bit skinnier and then comes out at the hoof again. So pay attention to these transition changes. Oh yes, and then there is, she is a Guernsey, so. And then if you want to, you can start erasing these or you can keep them in, we'll cover them up. So that's how to draw a cat. And so, you know, you can see, we've just got a little, her head, her head is turned this way. So her other ear is kind of hidden behind her uh, horn. But there's a little triangle of it right here. All right, let me send this out so you can see it. I think it's in pretty good shape. Ah, I just love it. I love it. I feel like ultimately I may need to bring the eyes up a little bit more, I say, as I look at that. Mm -hmm. So Donna, notice how you made the mountain exactly in the center here. Oh yeah. Yep. So just pay attention to that. It's funny how much we want patterns, even when the patterns aren't there. And the reason I tell you that is I want you to pay attention to where you might have done it elsewhere. You almost did it with the nose, but not quite. The right. nose is not divided halfway either. It's definitely a one, one third here, two thirds here. Mm -hmm. Yep, make sure your body is up here. Very good. I feel also like the horn comes in a little bit more than you have it. So notice there's a kind of shape up here. I'm just nitpicking now, I'm not being. So see how long this horn is and see how right. short your fat your horns look. So you gotta pay attention to the, um, this negative shape as well as the positive, you know, as well as the positive one. Let's see, Jack. One, two, three, four. Good proportions up and down. Jack, the um, eyes are actually at, they're a little bit below this line. They're, they're, the eyes are halfway. Can you see this? Yeah. The okay. eyes come down below. Uh, sort of they they line up uh, at this point if you were to draw a line which is exactly at the the quarter point line the eyes are halfway above and halfway below also bring in your ear here all the way to the edge of the face because that distinguishes the body also three also your horns are up a little higher so there's a little bit more of a space here on that side. What do you mean? Sorry, I don't understand. What the you horn about. is up a little bit higher than you have it. Do you see there's a triangle that comes all the way in and yours stops here? Oh, okay. Yep, it comes in more like that. It, it's so it's a knit longer when you have it. Good shape of your ear, by the way. I like that. Okay. Good shape of the legs. Good job, you guys.
Oh. Isn't it funny how much of your like our our mind is resistive? Wait, is this the right size? Are these the right size? <laughs> is this part as big? Is this part as small? Is this as big? Is this as small as I think it is? It's really boy drawing, man. Okay, so Jack, I sent you that those videos so you can take a look at them when you want to on sort of painting basics, but it's a lot of the same stuff we did with pastels. Yeah, um, I sort of did a few like acrylic paintings, but I just want to actually have like- Training. No insight on how to mi mix paints and- Yep, yep, you're gonna have, although we're not gonna spend as much time mixing today because I'm gonna let you pick your colors, but we're definitely, today is gonna be an exercise on matching color to value. Um, cause this is a fantastic painting to do this on. So we will talk about that. And also the importance of the base painting. So we'll talk about all of that. Um, but yeah, you should take that little, you should do the, um, it talks all about mixing that little, uh, video that I sent you. So, I mean, I'll be talking about it with each class, but it's a good basic for, how we're going to be making decisions about color mixing. As you can see I'm still adjusting. Tell me when you guys are ready. I'm ready. All right. So, so as usual, we are going to start with a single color base. So now I'm going to switch over to my other, I'm going to add a spotlight so you can see my setup as well. Let's see if I can get this so you guys can see it. So you should be able to see, come here you, here's my brushes, here's my, here's my painting, here's my source, here's my actual painting, here's my source. You'll be able to see it directly here, right? So I am going to pick a single color to make my base. Now I've done this painting once already this week and my base was green. So I'm kind of debating um, <clears throat> a different color base. What do I want to do? Maybe I want to do a bright red base. Okay. So I am going to pick a red color. I think I'm going to do a cool red. Well, I think I'm going to do it. I don't know. <laughs> what, am I, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to try a bright red brace. So this is cadmium red. It's a pretty bright red. Now watch me over on the screen on the right. So once again, oh, uh oh, I need, oh, here we go. Okay. Let me push this up a little bit so you guys can see. Hold on, doing a little extra positioning. All right. Oh, really, you still can't see it. Okay, there we are. So I have a little bit of paper towel or a rag here. I have my water here. I'm using a very big brush. Look over at the screen on the left to see the difference. I am not using a brush this size. I am not using a brush this size. I am using a brush that's almost one inch across. So your first layers are gonna be done that way. After that, you can move to a pointy brush, I promise. Um, so if I wanna start by doing my darkest areas in this one color, I'm gonna tap out the extra water. So it's damp, but it's not soaking. And I'm gonna do what's called loading my brush with paint. So I wanna make sure I have a lot of paint on my brush. And then I'm just looking at the source to make sure I'm in the darkest areas. I'm gonna paint the darkest areas 
first. So notice I'm going around the light areas into the darkest areas. That's down in here. Okay, I can't do this without looking at the brush. Um, so I'm using the same, I'm just making sure I'm loading up my brush with paint, there, here is dark, here is dark, here is dark, it's pretty dark here. It's really kind of dark on this hole. It's a different kinds of dark, but it's mostly dark on this side. It's kind of dark in the middle of the knee. It's dark at the base of this foot, very dark here on his, sort of dark on part of the horns dark here, dark in the ears. And then there's this sort of zigzaggedy dark area. So these are all the darks. I'm gonna take a picture of it so you can see it. Now, if I wanna use this same color to make lights, here, hold on. Here we go. So that's what that looks like. If I wanna use the same color, which I do to make the light areas and the background, I get, come over and look at the right. I get a lot more water. I have sort of, I have paint on my brush. Notice I'm brushing off the excess paint. And now my brush is more, I have less, I don't really have much paint on my brush. I've got mostly water. So as I come through and add in the light sections, which is pretty much everything else, it's more watery and appears as lighter. I'm gonna do this with my background as well. So you can see why it's okay. It's okay, you can see there's dripping happening. That's all right. I'm getting this color in all over the background because we're doing a mono color painting. And then we're gonna let that dry. So you don't have to use red. You can pick any color you want to, but I still wanna see a very distinct, and here I'll take a picture so you can really see it. I wanna see a distinct separation between light and dark areas. using more or less water. Any color you want, yellow, purple, blue, green. What's a good rule of thumb to think about? If, you're in, if your top colors are going to be, so because my base is red, I'm gonna actually be looking for colors that are, that tend to contrast with that, right? So I'm gonna be thinking about complementary colors. Probably I'm gonna be using turquoises and greens and blues, maybe yellow for my light on top. And of course I'm gonna let that dry, but you guys go ahead and try it.
So I want to. Sorry. Jesus. <sighs> How's it going, everybody? Send it over just when you feel like it. I'm not trying to rush you but when you get a chance. And in fact, I'm probably going to go get my coffee. I shall be right back. Let's see. Marie, what are you working on? Let's see. Nice, Donna. Good decision. Be interesting to see. Good job, Jack. So great. So we have the primary colors here. I'm playing with the cow. Yeah, it's fun, right? Yeah. Isn't that fun? It's, it's nice to just have a break. Yes and just do something that somebody else is leading. So Donna, the one thing, oh, very nice. Donna, pay attention to, make sure you don't lose the body here. So um, notice that the body comes all the way down to almost the edge. Got it. Yep. It drifted up. I know you had it right, and then it drifts. Darn thing, it has a way of doing that. Oh, that's fun, Marie. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this just so funny? I love this cow. She's the best. And she has a good life. Is there anything you need me to do? Um, we're now we're waiting for this to dry. So yeah, now your job is to give yourself three colors that represent light, medium, and dark here on your palette. Um, so since you did blue, you might want to try some oranges or some. Maybe you'll want to try some purples or something like that. But what you want to do is is find three colors. So here, let me show you how that looks. Uh, so I'm here looking at, I need a dark for sure, I think. You know, I think I might do a dark green, a viridian green for my dark. Here, wait. Let's 
So now I'm, hold on, I'm pulling off. <laughs> My Viridian green is running out. I thought I had another one, but perhaps I don't. Oh, a purple for the dark and an orange for the light. Um, so you need to show me that they are light, medium, and dark next to each other. So put them out and see, I can see. Like I'm laying this one. I think this looks like a medium and this looks like a dark. We'll see. And then I'm gonna try a yellow for the light. You might also wanna give yourself a little bit of white what to lighten things. With it? What? What does the base color have to have, have to do with it? Well, that's a good question. So you, my friend, need to watch the acrylic basics video, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, so if the base, remember the rule about complement, what do you remember about complementary colors? Do you remember what they are? Um, like com uh, colors that work well with each other. Yeah, well, no, that's not a good enough answer. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. What are the three complementary color pairings? No idea. Okay, so you have some catching up, young man. I'm gonna tell you now, but you need to watch that video because this is where we talk about it. Okay, complementary color pairings are? Red, green, orange, yes. blue, purple, yellow. Yep. They aren't colors that go well together. That's a, that's a non-answer purple and yellow. All colors go well together. So these are the complementary color pairings. That means when you put them next to each other, they pop each other forward. That's why you see so many sports teams. That's why Christmas is red and green. That's why you see sports teams that are blue and orange or purple and yellow a lot, right? In high school things. Because when you put these colors next to each other, they pop each other forward. They come boom towards you. When you mix these together, you get a gray, a kind of muddy color. That's the shadow of whatever color you're trying to mix. So if you're painting a lemon, you do not take black and put that into your shadows. You mix a little bit of purple in with your yellow to create a yellowy shadow color, right? If you're painting a red apple or, a, uh, or an orange, an, an orange, the shadow for the orange will be blue. You'll mix a little bit of blue with orange to make the shadow. And uh, for the red apple, you'll mix a little bit of green with your red to make the shadow. It's the opposite for a green apple. Um, so when you paint a base and you let it dry, that's a little bit like putting things next to each other, beside each other so that they'll pop forward. So if you pick a blue base, Orange is going to be the color that will pop the most off the top of that. That is like the choices that we're making about color. Does that make sense? Does that answer the question? Yes, thank yep. you. Okay, excellent. I mean, you can still play around with your colors. And also, it's very important to use this big brush on this at this point in the game. Very, very important because you don't want to not get too detailed. Yes, yeah, so actually we're not doing much mixing today, but we are doing, later you can move to a pointy brush like this one to do some of the detail work. But, and I'm just waiting for this guy to dry. However, I think my lights are, my lights are dry. So I can start with actually my lightest areas. So, I'm going to go back in. I'm making sure that my brush here, actually right here, I'm squeezing out the excess water in my brush uh, and I'm laying, I'm going in and in here, I'm laying down some yellow. So you see how, and here's a great example. So Jack, this is the yellow laying over uh, an under undercoating of paint. Here is the yellow just laying on white. The yellow laying on white is a little bit flat. This color has a little bit more juice. 
So, cause just like pastels, you did a bunch of pastel work. So I think you know this from pastels. If I lay yellow over something else, it has a little bit more vibrancy. So you can see, I'm putting in my light areas here. Let's see, a little bit of yellow here, definitely light up here. And then, ah, oh, my red's almost dry. So now I'm gonna clean out my brush because I wanna use the same brush. I like this big brush. I'm gonna get all the yellow out of it. Here we are. Now I'm gonna take some green. So look at that green. This is like a super vibrating green. If I put the green here, once again. Oh, come on, don't fall. Here we go. You see here, this green kind of reads flat, but this green is a nice, dark, rich green. That lays very nicely. And you can even see, I'm not totally covering up the red. I want little bits of the red to pop through. You know, a little bit back here, a little bit there, a little bit there, a bit here, a bit here. I can lay a bit, I'm brushing in a little bit of green, but I'm being a little bit less, I'm, I'm using a little bit less color because I know I'm going to come back in here and put in some medium tones because there are some medium tones. Actually, let me, just to remind you guys about that, let me write these down. So remember, if one is light, uh, that's not really very clear. Let's see, what else can I use? <laughs> I wonder if this will work. Nope. So I'm looking for the lightest. This will work. Mm -hmm. So this is a one. This is a one. This is two. Five. Four. Two. One, maybe four, five, one, <laughs> four, five, right? This is like, this area is like really a four. This is a five. This is five, one. So, you know, as you start to get in here, here's like a two, here's a one, here's a four, here's a one. So as you start to get in, you start to see like variations. Here, I'm gonna take a picture of this so you guys can see it. Sorry, I've been sketching it off camera because there's just no room right now, but let me get it in here. Okay. Zap. Hang on, Andy. There we go. Here are the values. 
You just need a few things. Uh, so Andy on this here, I'm gonna put this up here so you can really see it here, right? Okay, so if you can see, so those of you who are ready to paint with your colors, go ahead and do that. Nope, I'm gonna move this out of the way. So if you see this shape, it's too wide. It's wider than what's happening here, right? So your horn, you need to, so you basically widened your face. Wait, you've missed, what you've done is you've missed what's happening. Here, I'm gonna take a close up so you can see what's happening on the right. I want you to look at what's actually happening here on the right. So right here is the, is the ear and the horn. This is a little triangle of ear back here. You've put your eye, <laughs> it's got a kind of a Picasso look. You've put your eye here. So that's the problem that you're having is that you put your eye here when really this space is the ear. And then that will help you get your face right on this side. See that? So that's the biggest issue. Let me look here. This side is not bad, but you need to bring the leg up really. The leg comes all the way up to this edge on this side. Here, let me push it really close. Oh, Jesus, not that close, I guess. <laughs> Here we go. Here, I'm gonna remove this so you guys can see better. Here, I'm put this up a little bit. So here, you need to bring the leg all the way up to the nose. Here is the mouth, the bottom lip. You know, the under, like this is the top of the nose. And then here is the mouth. Here is a little line, which is that sort of her gullet. And then this is the back leg. So there's four shapes you kind of need to get grounded. But mostly you really need to work this area. So try that. I think that's going to help a lot. Remember, there is tricky things here. It seems fairly easily. It seems fairly easy. Hey, Leah. So, yeah. So may, maybe I'm just not seeing it in the photograph. So I thought that underneath the lip is is the worst catching part of the body, but really it's more like a little bit of the waddle. Yeah, it's a little bit the of the waddle and the legs. Okay, I thought it was a it's maybe it's just the printout that I have here. It looked more like Go, part of the body. Yeah. So see your confusion is you're trying to figure out what it is. And really you should just be looking at the shapes, right? Like, so your confusion is, so what I would do is go back to the original that I sent on the thread without all the drawing. So you can see it better or maybe even go to the original. Cause of course I cover stuff up when I draw it, right? When I'm drawing it. But yes, that it's like it's like bottom lip, waddle, leg this side, leg this side. But notice that knowing what it is doesn't help you. Knowing try knowing what it is is really um, kind of a a mind bender. Here, let's see. I'm looking for the the one that will really show you what this is. So there you go. Now you can see it. I'm gonna send it over in all its colorful glory. So always return to the original without all the junk on it. 
that'll help you see what's going on. If you're really struggling, turn your source upside down. All right, I'm gonna bring this back a little bit. Come back here. So my painting still looks pretty rough at this point. Marie colors better, isn't it? This time. It's better. Much better. Yeah. Yeah. So I also blocked out all my extra light. Okay. So now I'm going in with my smaller brush. I'm going to look at some of these transitions, which I've labeled for you. And I'm going in and adding in some mediums, like as a four up in here. With this teal. So I'm using this teal as kind of a lighter dark. Exciting. Uh, teal is kind of, it's kind of like lighter. I might mix a little bit of my medium with my dark to get a slightly darker. It's lighter here. than it is on the sides where things turn down. I might even mix a little bit of red in my green so that I really get a nice dark. So you see how I'm starting to create some transitions? I notice that the ear is much darker than the side of the face. The side of the face is like a four. The ear is a five. And the eye, which I've shown a close up to, has like significantly four different values in it. So just to show you what that looks like. <laughs> Pat says she's enjoy, although she's not here, she's enjoying watching the cows. So here is the eye on the left, on our left, right? Here is the eye on our right. So I'm really gonna try and get all those different, that's why I'm using a lighter brush. So I can see that kind of over the top of the eye, there's this light bit here. And then there's a really dark area. I'm actually gonna mix green with red to get a nice dark, kind of a dark, almost like, um, Cleopatra eyeliner, right? In like that. Then it's quite light. There's that sort of little white crescent moon here. And then it gets really dark again, more dark. See, so now we have a little bit of eye. See how that eye just starts to come out? And now I'm going to kind of transition around that green that I laid, kind of bring it up here. Because one of the things I'm noticing is that this really reads darker than what's been the face in front. So I'm paying attention to this edge here lightening it with a little bit of turquoise. <laughs> 
Isn't that interesting? I'm going to do it again on the other eye and I'm going to, cause it's just very, oops, oops, lost my picture. Here we go. Oops, nope, don't do that. Ah, if I touch the edge, I turn off the screen and then I have to, come on, there we are. Okay, no. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, sorry you guys. Equipment, uh, uh, senior moment fail. There it is. Get in there. There. Okay, I'm gonna scoot this over just a little bit so you can see again what I'm doing. So now, now the eye is kind of floating out here. So I'm gonna have it right up here so I get it, I get all the shapes that are happening up here. Um, here, I want you to see that. Yep. So once again, on this side, I've got this kind of four on the edge like this. And then I am I'm getting my brush wet to get all the extra off and I'm coming over here and mixing green and red. Oops, in fact, I need more green. Mixing green and red so I have a slightly darker, um, not just using green, I'm mixing the complement in so I can get a darker color. You're welcome to do that if you need to. Then in here, oh, so I have a, because I have this lighter color, it's a little bit difficult to get the darker to show. See what happens when I put in the yellow. The shape of this yellow, I'm noticing that the little crescent, which here was turned down, is kind of uh, moved up more to the top of the eye. Cleaning my brush. Yeah, need more green. Here we are. Oops, things are still wet. So notice my dark is getting a little affected. by my yellow, but I think I can fix that. I'm gonna go in and add a little bit more dark here. It's quite dark back here, a little bit lighter here. And then you'll also see there's a little light dot uh, in the center of the pupil, just like, you know, human eyes, which we've practiced. So you can add that in as well. Let 
I know this gets a little darker. We're going to be practicing kind of soft edges where the light and dark areas meet, meaning we're going to kind of create a sort of raggedy strip where the light and dark, right, to create that feeling of hair. And then I should, we should, and then this is a really good point to start thinking about once the cow starts to come out to start thinking about what your background color should be. So, I mean, I guess technically I should have a, um, it should be red, but I'm kind of wanting to play with some different colors. So I'm going to try red because it's a complementary color, but let's see what happens if I put this purple in here. Hmm, too dark. Maybe I can add a little white and lighten it. Or maybe it's just not the right color. Maybe it just looks dumb. But I'm adding a little white here. Oh, that's a little bit better. So at this point, although I'm not entirely done with my cow, it helps to kind of get and notice how I'm kind of working the outline. Oh, yeah, that's nice. It helps to get the background in so I can see what else I need to do to make my cow kind of pop. So I picked yellow, I picked purple because even though this cow is mostly green, there the yellow is. Um, purple. The yellow is a complement to purple and maybe purple might look nice. Also, I've been obsessing about this new purple, new ones are neutral, neutral, new, new purple that I got. So see how like all of a sudden my cow starts to center and solidify a little bit. Um, I'd highly recommend for those of you who uh, are using different colors, maybe a turquoise is a good one which you can get by mixing phthalo blue or phthalo green and white. Oops. Yeah, uh, much better, Andy, much better. Bring your white area just a little bit out here. Yeah, great. See, you found it. You just got lost on this side. And this ear is kind of folding back, which is why we can't see it. Ilya, I'm sorry, you said bring this white area in? I don't know what you're- Over I mean. here, over here a little bit. So oh, okay. you have yours kind of going like this and really it should kind of be um, coming over here to sort of more evenly divide the face. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome, good job. How's it going over there, you guys? See, now I can go back in and start working on my face a little bit more. Um, the area where there's the most variety is the nose. There's lots of different, as you can see here, there's twos, there's fours, there's threes. So I can kind of come back in here. This right here, I'll put that right here. <laughs> Let's see how close I can get you without getting in the way of the drawing. Now I'm still with my kind of more pointy brush. Let's see. So I'm like kind of going in with a little bit of white to sort of turn my yellow into a Maybe I'll, let, let, I'll mix a little bit of yellow in so it's not quite yellow, but I want my white to kind of read as lighter. OK, 
because up here it's a little bit lighter. Down in here, it's a little bit lighter. Kind of here. It's a little bit lighter. Bits in here, a little bit lighter. Here's a white, like here's a super light area in the dark. In the dark. Okay, now I take this off so I can really see. What's happening here? He's been having a grand old time. Okay, there's areas that are darker. This needs this area I need to get darker. Here, darker. Oh, I'm missing the darkest part. Notice how one way of emphasizing darker areas is to make everything around them a little bit lighter. So the nostril on this side is quite dark compared to the colors next to it. So part of what I'm doing here is getting lighter on top and on the bottom so you can see that. Is anybody enjoying this yet, by the way? <laughs> it's pretty fun. It is pretty fun, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's like there's a lot of wonderful light dark transitions. You can really work. And that's kind of awesome. I mean, there's even some transitions in down here. You can see that part of this leg is lighter. The light's kind of coming from the right side. <clears throat> I think everybody's gonna come up with something pretty good here, right? Because the shapes are so dynamic and so extreme. Um, you can take like your brush and do these little hairs too. You can try it with a pointed brush, but the pointed brush is likely to be too thick. 
So the other thing you can do to do these little white hairs that are kind of hanging off the side of him here. Here, hold on. I'm seeing areas I want to fix as I'm coming in here. Um, is you might take your big brush like this. We've explored this before. And then see how I'm pinching off just two or three uh, hairs. And then I'm coming over here and I'm really sort of dipping my brush awkwardly, these couple bristles awkwardly here. And then I'm adding in a couple of so I can't really control this very well, which is actually what makes it more look like a whiskers. So I'm looking at where the whiskers are. See that? So this often makes a whisker that's kind of a cow whisker that's thin enough. There we go. Because cows have whiskers too. I can even try that over here. Here, I'll do it again. Try that here in the background. Isn't that interesting how you can do that? So that's a, there you go, little tip for. You might notice after a bit that some of your lights get dark. So you can go back in with lighter again when it dries and come over on the top. But also you might notice that it might help you to go back to your big brush to notice how some clumps are going, right? Of lighter hair. So I see some coming up off this way. I guess it's kind of a soft edge. Yeah. <laughs> I was struggling to get the light dark contrast. Now that everything is dried over on this eye here, I can get it more clearly. Right, so I can go back in there. I can always reshape and repaint things. Little dot right there. So yeah, now we're kind of testing now, not just your drawing skills, but you're like, you know, dealing with this crazy perspective thing, but also your ability to associate uh, the relativity of color and value, right? Once you get that you can pick any colors you want as long as they read as light, medium or dark, next to the light, medium, and dark areas, you're very free with color. You can do a lot. So Leah, at what point do we start painting the background? Um, I'd say when you've got the major light, dark shapes in, but you okay. don't have a lot of the details. So I wouldn't do too much detail on the nose get the, like this, this, and this in. Okay. Get your eyes basically in. Get the major light and darks in, and then go into the background to see, to sort of help see how much your cow is coming forward with those bigger shapes. Okay. Yeah. Great question. I'm gonna let this sit for a second. <laughs> Let's have fun. Mm-hmm, Andy, that's good. Oh, Andy, you're missing the side here. You're missing the side here. So you need to add in 
Let me see if I can show you. So you're, 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 uh, so Andy, you are under the impression that this is all a five, but it isn't. If you look really closely at the picture, you'll see that the, the face in the front of the ear is from four. So it needs a line between it and the, the dividing point of the ear. So let me show you exactly where that is. That is right here. See that? So you need that line in there too. Then you're in good shape. Oh. <laughs> Let me take a picture of it. I'll send it over. Okay, here it is. What's up? On. Send it over, by the way. Love to see progress. There you go. Yeah, you can't see it too well in my painting right now, so I'll highlight that a little bit. I'll make this a little bit lighter. So, Andy, see, I'm actually kind of lightening that bit so that it comes forward. A little bit from this back ear, which is quite dark. I want that face, the side of the face to come forward a little bit. There we go, that's a little bit better. Give me one minute, you guys.
How's it going over there, Jack? I'm just having a bit of fun. Let me see. I believe you are. <laughs> this is a really fun one. And the colors can be as crazy as you want them to be. I mean, as long as they match values, it can really be any color. Let's see. Yeah, that is fun. You're getting some good value differentiation. So I would, when you start to go in and do the really darks, right? Like the eyes and the, um, uh, when you start to go in and do the eyes, I'll give you a couple of mixes you can do for darks, okay? One is burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Makes a great dark. <laughs> <laughs> He's really cute, Donna. Uh, make sure, Donna, look actually carefully at the shape of the light and the dark and the medium. The light doesn't go all the way around. It's like a little crescent moon here. It's mostly dark. Okay. So let that dry and then get back in with the darks that you need. Um, also, yeah, just watch the dark light divide. It's fun. This is really cute. Notice the top of his head is slightly kind of pointy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yep, look at it, you can see it. Um, pretty close here. Here, I'm gonna send a picture over so you can really see the top of his head. See the top of his head? Yeah. Yep. yep. So you can use your background to go in and kind of reshape it. Got it. Just as a reminder, remember the difference between hard and soft edges. So let me see if I can do a demo of this since we're here. So there are hard edges in painting, right? And there are soft edges in painting. This is a hard edge. It means that I can really see the line between the, the, the two values, right? So this is slightly darker. I can really see that line between the two colors and separating them. That's a hard edge. But a lot of things are like soft edges. So what's a soft edge? It starts out like a hard edge. Here, hold on, I'm getting light in here, right? It starts out as a distinct line. And then notice I go across, see how I'm holding my brush? I'm going kind of vertically across. Oops, I got too much. Loading my brush with the light color. I'm kind of going in and scumbling across so that I get rid of that strong line. It's almost a tapping thing that I'm doing here. So instead of this very strong line here, 
I have a transition from light to dark, but it's softer. So there are some softy transitions. The transition between say the ear and the background is quite hard or the body in the background or really any part of the car in the back, cow in the background is hard. And some parts here are hard, but the area where the light is, this light goes into the dark, that's a little softer. I have to show you guys um, uh, in my class on Friday, uh, the students drew um, a peak, painted a peacock. So same idea, people were choosing their own colors. And then one woman who lives in LA, there are wild peacocks that live outside her house. So she showed the peacock <laughs> her painting <laughs> and he put his little feathers up. <laughs> <laughs> put his tail up here. Hold on. It's like, it's an absolutely hilarious um, photo. He obviously liked it. I loved it. It was so funny. <laughs> I know I sent it across again in the morning because it was just so hilarious. Here, wait, hold on. Ah, it's in Europe, India art. Okay. So here it is. And she wrote, he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> here it is look at this so this is the real peacock here is the painting <laughs> <laughs> he apparently is also really ready to mate and unfortunately there's nobody left in the flock except him so nobody to mate with really oh i didn't know that mm-hmm yeah there were 20 of them, and then slowly over time, some have been reported to animal controls. Some people have stolen them, turned them into pets. So now there's only one left. Can you fucking believe it? People. I was going to say, people are weird. People are awful. <laughs> <laughs> Just awful. But anyway, there he is showing his happiness. We, this is fun with bright colors, I will say. I bet. Get it. So you got that. Did you get that new set? Yeah, I got the, um, uh, no, not the one that I showed everyone. Cause that's like really affordable. I ended up getting the Terry Ludwig one set, um, of the bright. Hi. Oh, what feet? You can come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Look. <laughs> I love that cow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, right? She's just like, yeah, I'm sexy and I know it. <laughs> I'm noticing that my cow's horn is needs a little bit of work and a slight needs to be a little bit longer too. So I'm going in.
as you go in, you'll start to see more sort of variations. By the way, I will totally take a request. So if you find an animal picture you really want to paint, send it over. We'll be spending the next four weeks doing animals, which are really awesome. Yesterday we did raccoon, two baby raccoons and beginning drawing. We did a peacock, we did this cow, we did another cow. If you've just got something you're dying to get to do. The cuter, the better. But remember, the animal needs to have good contrast. So that's our main goal, is to create an animal like Harry, who's got some nice contrast for us to work with. There we go. Now I lost my dark on my right side, so I got to get that back. Isn't painting awesome? Such a good, such a fun thing to do.
Uy. Let's see. Uh, nice, Andy. All right, now uh, pop into the, uh, let it dry. It's probably drying right now. Go ahead and start adding on your uh, top colors. Pushing the darks and lights more. By the way, you guys have an hour, so plenty of time. Yep, the colors are way better here on the screen with the curtains up. That makes me really happy. No, 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 stop it. Keep that on. Don't be a shithead. I'm talking to the cat. Here, hold on. No. Thank you. 
So, very nice. I think I'm done. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. Are you regretting? Fun. Are you regretting sunsets? <laughs> um, I could see that took a lot out of you. You did great, by the way. I just think. Um, well, I think it, it's just with anything you. That's what you learn, right? Is that it? Just seems like it's simple, but it really isn't. Right. But right. um, I think it's going to be good. I forgot to remind everyone that I won't be there next Sunday. Uh, I'll do that. Yeah, um, kind of forgot about that, but. Uh, I will do that. Don't you worry. This is, I think blending is with anything so important. Yes. Yeah. The soft edges. Yep. Just like what yep. you're doing soft today. Soft edges. Yeah. Yep. So it was interesting talking about the different platforms of Instagram and Facebook today, Leah, and like TikTok. Yeah. Oh, yeah. TikTok. Good grief. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna go away now because I. It's late. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Are we gonna see you again, kiddo? You're gonna come back next week? Um, probably. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, there good. is a class on Friday that starts at uh, five o'clock your time. So in the evening. So if you want to do that class instead, that you're totally welcome to do that. If that works better, time wise. Okay, is that three hours too? No, it's only two hours. The other classes are all two hours. This is the only one that's three hours. Okay, and I was just wondering um, how much do I have left on my pass? Um, I'll have to take a look. If you hang on just a second, I can tell you. I think it's like three, but let us see. Hey, Tinker. In a moment. Hey, You have Hey baby. Oh, where are you? Hmm. Hi, Dad Duck Girl. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yes, you are. I know. Yes. Uh Let's see. Uh, you have one more left after this one. Hey, Tinker. Okay, thank you. Um, yes. Come here. 
Yes, yeah. ask me any question you like, kid, if you've got any questions at all about this. Uh, I'm all right. I think I'll just go to bed now. Okay, kiddo. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Good work today. Be right back. I'm gonna go outside. There's some sun outside and it's like super nice out there. One second. Donna and Marie, if you poke your head outside, it's nice outside. Is it? I'm going to take Molly for a walk. Yeah. Hi, yes. It's Hi. beautiful. I just moved outside because I'm wanting to suck in the, 
you know, it's that typical Oregon little spring thaw that always happens. Yep. On this time. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting all ready for dad. Nice. Yeah. When's he uh, coming in? Wednesday. Is that surgery day or is Thursday yeah. surgery day? Yeah, Wednesday surgery day. Okay. So Cross. brother will bring him up all drugged up. <laughs> <laughs> you should dis, uh, I know he loves Fox News. You should totally dislocate uh, his channel. <laughs> oh my God. No, I got him headsets that are Bluetooth. So you don't have to hear it? Yep. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. And then um, I'm so I'm subscribing to his two favorite channels, Ride TV and the Cowboy Channel. So he's going to be all set. <laughs> <laughs> Not bothering you. Yes, and and I have a TV right in his room for him, so he can just put his headset on and listen to his heart is content. <laughs> Good. Yeah. It'll good. be good. I, I mean, uh, my brother is going to help out, so that'll be good. More than last time. <laughs> Hi, boo-boo. Come here. There we go. Yes, you're all right. You're all right. You're all right. We're just starting to let Hermes outside run and run around. So I'm kind of trying to be outside so he can see me and he won't run away. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know how you do that. I mean, I just feel like you, I know Sandra was saying that like boy cats will, will get lost more easily, but I don't know much about cats, honestly, so mm. I don't know. Mooka has moved many times, and I have let her go outside almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's always a, just a, just you want to wait till they're very familiar with the house and the smells. Yeah. And uh, kind of be around. Yeah, I would be nervous. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let this little she dog run wild. Right? <laughs> no. Yeah. Mm. Nope, but she turns one this week, this coming week. Wow. I know. That seems crazy. Yep. Your little quarantine doggy. Yep. Yep. She's a good dog. Uh, we start our, um, well, officially she gets to go to her obedience training class on Thursday night. Right. With other dogs. We, I, I just went with the, the parents. Hi. So, so. Marie, where do you do that? Um, there is a dog trainer out here. Huh? And um, so we're in a big, like an auditorium. Are you in Portland? No, I'm in Scappoos. Oh, okay. Um, so it's actually in St. Helens, which is just 15 That's minutes. That's a bit away. of a haul for you. Yeah, where are you at, Donna? I'm in Southeast Portland. Southeast. Like, oh, you're Southeast. Okay. I was going to say, if you're by Leah, it's not bad. No, she's far. Yeah. Yep, so... But there's only eight dogs, including Molly. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I definitely, I adopted my dog uh, December 4th. And she's oh, great, okay. But she's from Mexico. So um, her knowledge of English commands isn't great. And, oh. you know, sit, stay. Um, I can't oh. get her to heal. I cannot get her to walk good on a leash at all. So, um yeah, I, I, I'm just in the, you know, I'm shopping for some obedience classes. And I figure once the, you know, the weather gets better, they'll probably have some outdoor classes and that's exactly. Sort of 
so. Yeah, it is a little tricky with us all in our masks. <laughs> but um, it's, I think it's going to be good. I mean, I told them what I needed and, you know, every dog is specific, but <sighs> it's five weeks, so it should be, should be good. So. It's a definite worry though, right? You spend a yeah. lot of time thinking about it. Yeah, but summertime ends up being really busy and, um, this will be a good time when my dad's here so he'll he likes training and he's around animals so I'll give him something to help out with so we'll be good actually send out a text Let's see. <laughs> oh, it's looking great. Um, so I would say, Donna, that the hard edges that you've got where the where the yellow top of his head meets the dark top mm -hmm. of his head, you could uh, soften those. Okay. Right? Yeah. Definitely. Start by softening, softening those. I also think we might darken the blue on the light side of him. Okay. So maybe do another, it, I feel like the blue is kind of watery. And mm -hmm. so, and it looks nice, but um, I feel like it's like his leg and his right, his left side, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Our left side, the, the side that's on our left, uh, if, the, if the blue was darker, it would help push the cow forward a little bit more. Okay. So start with the soft edges and then we'll go to. All righty, thanks. Yeah. And you'll see there's these kind of tufts of hair on the top, like swoops that have shapes, kind of clumped, clumps of hair that go in one direction and then another clump of hair going in another. So you might use your big brush to take some lighter. You could even take white if you wanted to and swoop, mm -hmm. do a couple of swoops. Okay. I'll show you, but I want to see if you see what you get to on your own there. <laughs> She's like, when are you taking me out? Marie, you can totally take her out now if you want to. You don't need to wait for us. I, I think I probably will. She's, uh, she's getting a little anxious. Aren't you? Aren't you? Yes, you're still a puppy, but you're an anxious little turkey. Yeah. We're going to learn manners. Yeah. Yep. We won't be so spoiled anymore. No. All right. Well, you guys have a great week. You too, sweetie. All right. And Enjoy. I'll talk to you, Leah, about... Um, the submission because I yeah. need to get that. Yeah, yeah you've got till March 14th. And Marie, okay. there's a information meeting at 6 p.m. on Tuesday. So okay. if you want to come to that, that might be helpful so you can you know kind of get the lay of the land. I would like that. Okay.
All right. Yeah. Send me information or just tell me where to go. Okay. Yeah. I will. will okay. Do. okay. Okay. Thanks, Leah. Okay. See bye, everyone. Bye. Have a great week. Bye. You too. Bye. my god somebody just posted a picture of a platypus baby maybe we'll paint a platypus baby next week they're really cute <laughs> totally cute hey Donna, you should put a note on Facebook for good obedience trainers. Trainers, I bet you lots of people in your about a lot, bet you a lot of your friends no ones in the area. I mean, I'm sure people who are certified trainers are looking for work. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Perfect, you know, especially with everyone who's adopted a dog. <laughs>
don't know if I've sent a picture of this last one. I know you've been staring at it. All right. I just sent a picture over.
six. Hold on, wait, I'm going up probably here at six thirty. Oh, okay. But the my, less my, it, st my study group starting at six. Okay. Maybe but I'll be offline. Maybe we can just switch seats. Yeah. <laughs> the negotiations. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that this was on. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I thought I had my volume off. I'm sorry. No, it's I awesome. Didn't subject anyone to that. <laughs> well, it's just this is let life, alone isn't me, it? <laughs> right? <laughs> I love it because it's so like this is what's anyway, you know. It's the negotiations. Uh, I need it all. I need to be online. <laughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. Okay. Oh, I know. I know, Luna. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Let's see. <laughs> I see you get, I hear you giggling. Oh yeah, very nice. Donna, great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Isn't she great? Very cool. Oh my God. And what did you think about this experiment with color? I think it's good. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, no, I mean, not only is it the contrast, but it's just blending between mm -hmm. the, the contrast, you know? And it's, seeing what uh, things do on top of other things. Yeah, definitely. Right? Like, I really love that. I think that turned out um super well if you need to take your doggy out for a walk you're excused you've yeah, done your job <laughs> this is fun. thank you so much yeah uh, animals are really fun we're gonna have a fun month All right. <laughs> that was really really good excellent All right, send us you. pictures of your puppy maybe okay. we can do him She's We've got a... She's oh so... no yeah we don't want that but i'll send you for sure. Send us anyway, just for the heck of it. Okay. Sounds good. All right. All right. Oh, See you later, Donna. Bye, everyone. Yep. Andy, it's just you and I. Oh, hey, that's looking good. Jeez, Andy. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Oh, my God. He's great. Uh, I like the idea that you um, uh, kind of... Uh, hung out what i like andy about this is that you stuck with one color which i think made it easier 
Um, I'm going to make a couple suggestions. One is Please, that, I, felt, I felt like I haven't gotten to the values part yet. Like I was just laying down something. Yeah, the basics. So look at the nose to start to get the value shifts in the nose. And if you want to, I'll send over the picture again so you can really get it. The nose holes are fives, right? So right, right. here is like a five and this is a five. And then right next to it are like ones and over here a four. So okay. there's these variations. I'm gonna send you the picture again, it, unless you need to go. Uh, no, but, I don't. I, I, do, I mean, I, uh, I actually have an unexpected window because it was raining so badly here. So. Awesome. Well, I mean, I hate to see that it was raining here, but here I'm going to send you the values shift of the nose. So I want you to work on some of those values. So just use more light and, you know, add more light. And uh, if you want to add a touch of orange to your blue to make it even darker. And then I, I didn't touch the background color at all. Part of me was thinking of going with something like neon green or something. Try it. Turquoise. Try turquoise it. Uh, don't do turquoise, but try neon because you've got too much uh, blue already going on there. But try neon green. I like so that. How would I do a neon green? Um, like viridian, cadmium yellow, maybe a touch of white. White, yellow, and viridian and green. Viridian green. Cad yellow and viridian green. Try that. I have to go get my charger. Hang on. Everything's oh, like dying God. on here. Hold on. Everything's dying on me. Although Andy, I do want to point something out, which is that I want you to notice how great the orange background also looks uh, behind the next to the blue. So can you see I how? I think it like, looks great, but I just I used, right as you said that I just put down the first brush stroke of green. Do it. Try it. I want you to see. I want you to play, and I want you to see. But I did want to observe. I mean, you can always put orange on top of it when yeah. it dries so but i want you to notice and i did a two-toned cow earlier this week so i'll show you that guy here hold on oh wow That looks great. So you could try a two tone, like half of it green and half of it orange. <laughs> just to see how it looks. 
but it's uh anyway it's your cows already looking great so just yeah spend the last 20 minutes One problem I've been having is, is these boards that I've been using, they don't dry very well. They don't dry quickly. I don't know whether I should put a layer of gesso on before class. Well, oh, did that help? What did you think of that? Did that work I for did you? not put a layer of gesso on. No, I just, oh. I was just using the board. And so I just end up like spending a lot of time I feel like I'm waiting longer for this to dry than I would normally. Right, because the gesso helps it dry faster. Because the gesso kind of pushes it up so there's less bumpiness. The less bumpiness, the more quickly it'll dry, right? Because the, the air doesn't have to go so far. Oh, stop sounding so pathetic. Um, by the way, uh, hmm. The, I saw you were offering like some basics on acrylics and yes, would you like those uh, lessons? I would. And then also I saw there was like a basic perspective class. Yes, that's going to be coming. That's going to be on March 9th. That's be, like one hour. Yeah, one hour. Uh, so there'll be you will love that. You will absolutely love that. I'm not teaching it, actually. Uh, another student who's really good with perspective and has a lot of art school education is going to teach that. So yeah, that is, but I'll also videotape those. So that's also available. So yeah, I've got two painting basics class, which just go over mixing materials, making soft and hard edges, complementary colors, right? Stuff that we go over, but might it's like an hour long. And then, uh, yeah, and then there's going to be this hour long lecture on understanding perspective. So I think you would really dig it. So I'll send all I'll try to send you guys reminders as I do this stuff. It's in it's in the um, it's in the schedule that I just sent you. So I saw the schedule, which is why I was, at, yeah, I was, that's why I was bringing it up. It looked great. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I'm going to give you a schedule for the second half of the month once I figure out what all the fucking time changes are. Oh my God. Actually seeing the time changes were help, was helpful because um, for some reason I thought Marie's class was earlier on Sunday morning. Uh, it is. Reason, right, no, but our time it's noon. Yes, exactly. It's 9 a.m. our time. It's yeah, it's noon and for your some time. reason I thought it was like nine or 10 Eastern time. And I, I know, know. Why, I don't it's, know why I thought that. Well, just because it's confusing. And that's why I print that schedule out so that everybody knows. But here's the really fucked up thing. What happens is on March 14th, we go forward an hour and Europe doesn't for two more weeks. And then right. Europe goes forward an hour and India never goes forward or backward. India just stays the same time. So like, I'm like, oh my God, every, I don't even try. So I will actually do a separate schedule for the 14th through the 28th. And then there'll be another schedule for like the 28th onward because it gets really confusing. Right, like what classes start when and what starts, and it's not like I've changed the start time really. Um, but different areas have different time zones changes at different times. It's really annoying. <laughs> it's like, no, oh but I, I gotta say it was it was I don't know whether it's COVID brain or just like trying to juggle so many you know we've had so many things going on and yeah you know, I, I wish. I wish it was just all like, you know, peace and quiet and art time, but. It's yeah, not. I know it. I know. So yeah, I'm glad that I'm glad that schedule helps. Uh, and and usually be I'm really good at that, which is why it was like. 
why am I missing that? <laughs> I know. <laughs> of course, because we talk about it because me, she and I are both on the early time frame. And I notice, I don't know if you notice this, I tend to talk towards the time frame I'm teaching to, but Marie does not because she's just, she's not used to it yet, right? So uh, for her, she's still adjusting to the idea that at her time, she's teaching people in the evening, right? And in the afternoon. Uh, so she still thinks it's 9 a.m., it's early, but really there's very few people on the early on the early train with us. It's mostly later. <laughs> it's mostly right. No, it's just, it was just really help. I mean, I was surprised, like I was going through your schedule, I was like, oh. And then this I was trying to awesome. see like what I might possibly squeeze in during the week, work week, but that's always so dodgy for me. I know, I know, I know, like I totally get it, but these will be recorded. So I will make sure that you get uh, copies of those as well. And in fact, since we're talking about it, I'm gonna send it over to you. I'm going to send you over the acrylic basics class and then at before the end of March, there will be a watercolor basics uh, uh, class too because we're moving to watercolor in April. We are. Mm -hmm. I know <laughs> you're just studying. I will try to keep a painting class going all year long, so I will try to have one have a painting class going so you can continue uh, a acrylic painting class so that you guys can continue to practice that. But yeah, the core curriculum moves on to watercolor for two months and then we move back to drawing, figure drawing. Then we spend six months in figure drawing again. So, um, which will be interesting to return to drawing after spending, you know, doing it for six months and then trying painting for six months. It's, it's always an interesting transition. So I've been, you know, I haven't had time to actually like, you know, do the exercises, but I've been skimming through like the right side of the brain and some other drawing books I have. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like even if I were to spend like five or 10 or 15 minutes drawing each day, I'd probably, it would not hurt. I, I think it would help a lot. Um, it's and, kind uh, of, it's like running. Right, like if you don't run, because you're a runner, aren't you? Yeah. You run. So if you miss a few days of running, it's like you never ran, right? You would get back into it, and you're like, or say you miss a week of running, it's like it's like having to build up your tolerance all over again. Um, so it's the same with drawing. If you can get in three hours a week of practice, which is really literally 15 minutes a day you uh, you'll keep your your brain in that mode, which means that even when you're not in the mode, the brain is still functioning that way. So, so I was going to ask you like if there were you know exercises that I would do, like well, drawing on the right side of the brain has a bunch of them. Yeah, so you would recommend just doing those you know from the the face vase thing onward just yep and uh, draw your hand. Um, so you'll find this interesting. I have a client who is a, a, a longtime private student who is a psychotherapist, a, a psychiatrist. And uh, he, so he deals, and he has a lot of clients who will see him several times a week because they're really trying to work on something. And so he had a woman who was deeply, deeply anxious. And he said for a year, he had her spend five minutes drawing her hand right before the session. So right before the session, she would draw her hand um, while not looking at her hand. It's one of the exercises in the book. She just spent five minutes. And he said for a year, he noticed a, she and he noticed a significant reduction of anxiety in the session. If she wow. didn't draw the hand, she was more anxious. So there's something very meditative about, and she was more able to kind of remove herself. You know how like when you get really anxious, it's hard to... Uh, see why you're anxious because the anxiety kind of takes over. Uh, he said she was much more able to break, sort of remove herself from her anxiety, to see herself as separate from her anxiety, which was really important in, 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 in the process. And she did that for a year and it worked and it stopped working when it became too easy for her. So then you need a different assignment, right? Like, but that, yes, just five minutes every, before every session, drawing your hand while looking at your at not looking at your paper, but looking at your hand. Uh huh. That was massive. It was a massive shift for her. Isn't that interesting? 
That is really interesting. It's so fascinating. Yeah, because it kind of, and if you notice, like today was a great example of everybody pretty focused on the task. There wasn't so much talking. It's partly because the class was smaller, but you know, there wasn't that much talking and everybody was kind of clicked into the jobs, right? So um, that's a significant like mental shift. Uh, it's funny, it's a kind of a, I, I really think it's a lot like running. You know, like it starts out, you maybe you want to run, maybe you don't, but there's always that sort of initial, uh, like ten, five or 10 minutes where your body's getting used to it. And then you kind of click into a zone of ru a running zone where like it feels better. Uh, and you're just in the task of running, right? You're not really thinking about anything else. You're just uh -huh. running. You're blood is pumping, your body is moving. There's a similar thing that happens with drawing and painting as you get into the task of it. So all of a sudden you're just like, oh yeah, look, that's a little light area and that's a little medium area and this is a dark area and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And this shape is here and this shape is there. Um, so it is a fascinating, to me, I think as you continue to shift yourself, um, by doing it all the time the more you do it the better i guess is my only point like, no no i totally yeah. agree with you and i was just actually asking more for your professional opinion of like you know I, I noticed actually around the house i've got like you know i've somehow over the years collected drawing books that i've obviously never <laughs> availed myself okay. of right of, um and thinking like okay well which one do i start with like some exercises you know, I don't like and others, you know, do I you don't. have so what books do you have? I can tell you in one second. Let me just email yeah. you this photo because actually think I think it's coming maybe. along. Okay. Do you like the green? Let's see. <laughs> I love the green. I love the green. Oh, that is a totally psychedelic cow. <laughs> love him well that worked out and you know why that works andy it works because the orange is still coming like, through yeah i decided to keep the orange around the periphery i, I think it's cool. perfect so like, I, I know i know we don't have much time uh i can, no, that's okay do you want me to show you the books i could show you the yeah show me the books here i'm so, gonna take i'm gonna remove the spotlight so i can see you hold on you've got okay the art of drawing, great. Uh, this is just a learning to Aaron's. paint drawing. Oh my God, you're totally you've been you've been gearing up for this for years. <laughs> uh, now this has this I got it like some garage sale or or library book sale, which you know that's I do that too much. I'm just going to show you the inside in case that is familiar to you. Uh huh. Yes, Wait. that's going to be trickier. Modern prints and drawings, but still worth it. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of, if you started with, yes. Okay. So here's my suggestion. Keep going. If you've got more. I think I have two more. Okay. Oh yes. That, so those will be harder. So those are definitely, oh, Nicolaides, the natural way to draw. So that's my, there are great exercises in there. So stick with Nicolaides. Okay. And the natural way to draw. I fucking love that book. And hold on, um, natural way to draw. Let me, let yeah, me just that's get these it. on top. Yeah. So Nicolaitis, the natural way to draw, that book you just showed me. That's yeah. it. Sorry. I always think of it as Nicolaitis natural way to draw because it's just so uh he's a wonderful. It's I think you'll really appreciate his descriptions. They're wonderful. Um and uh Nicolaitis, the natural way to draw, and drawing on the right side of the brain. Okay. So now there's one, to... there's one more book I want to show you that has fantastic drawing exercises. Don't be put off by the title. Hold on. If you're looking for great, like 15 minutes, Drawing with Children is Fantastic by Mona Brooks. So this has a lot of like let me look here this has these great little exercises stuff like copying things like this okay right um but 
But the lily exercise that I taught you comes from there. Oh, hold on. And they've got some, and also the basic elements of shape. So the ones that I've talked to you guys about all the time, that's here. Okay. And, uh, but what I really love is they have a lot of, she's got a lot of like, she's got some abstract exercises. Look, they've got like, I love this. Something like this is like really great for looking at shapes and forms. But then they, she has a lot of step-by-steps. So draw a bird. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, you know, she just walks you through the steps. So the idea of drawing, could you, which- could you, put the, could you put the cover back up? I just take, take a quick picture so I can remember the title. Mona Brooks, Drawing with Children. You will love these. At the, so if you're looking for like, and, and I love this concept because essentially what she's recognizing is you, the adult and you and the child are in the same place, but you, the adult also have to be able to walk the child through it, right? While yeah. you're walking yourself through it. So all of her exercises are structured so that the adult can do the exercise, see the steps and teach it to the child. <laughs> the child right. like it's like, it's kind of brilliant. Uh, so Mona Brooks does, uh, she did the Monart method, which is a pretty famous uh, sort of uh, teaching method. Anyway, I, I fucking love this book. I refer to this book so often here. I'll show you. She's got like, I mean, it's continues that she has this great one on kitchen utensils. So here, wait, I'll show you. She shows you how to, I've used so many of these. So she shows you a kind of simplified drawing of this. And then she walks you through drawing each item. So there's a, here's the teapot, right? Step by right. step of the teapot. And then uh, I've had so many people at the very beginning when I first started teaching, here's the teapot finished, here's the base. Yeah. Um, and the flowers in the vase. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, and what I just, I'll tell you, I relied on this so heavily when I first started teaching because it was that. so good. It was so good. Yeah, and you can probably feel it. it. She's absolutely influenced the way I teach. And I love it because there's no mystery. So if you're an adult and you can follow directions, it's... <laughs> Well, that's, right? that's a big leap. <laughs> right, that is a big leap, but like, I love this. So anyway, I love this book. Um, and, uh, and then if you ever run into any kids, I think your kids are kind of older, so they're not like, you know, yeah. you know, they're not little, but you know, maybe grandchildren come along, you can walk your little grandchildren through the, through the steps, you know, like your friend's kids who are younger, you can walk them through the steps. And uh, every time you kind of, ret I return to this book, I am like sort of taught more deeply about the drawing process. Like, it, and it's a really wonderful, so it's a wonderful hierarchy challenging, like it takes that hierarchy. So it gives you the adult, the control to be able to do it, but also to understand what it is you're doing, knowing that you don't know any more than the kid. Right. So, but like giving you the tools, you know, <laughs> and well, she, I Go yeah, ahead. and I'm asking because like 10 years ago, I would like maybe ride on the train and I would draw on the train, which is always dodgy anyway, because the train is moved, bouncing yeah. around a little, but I would just be copying. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure. I mean, it's that's from good. The that's good. From the perspective lessons. I'm not quite sure. Like, like, I, I just find like when we're doing like the lesson today, I spent so much time drawing. It was driving me nuts. That's OK. That's OK. You're just learning how to that's that happens with a lot of people. Uh, most people did not have time to finish. When I taught this in a two hour time frame, most people didn't finish it. So that's not the point. The point is not to take the time that I think for you, the painting comes easier than the drawing. So let the drawing be the thing that takes a while. Also, I really threw that at uh, one of the things I'm finding as I'm teaching is that sometimes, I mean, when I started this, 
lesson earlier this week, I was going to grid this thing. But I find the grid really frustrating because everybody's working with a different size paper. And so it doesn't work very well. So I've been kind of forced into teaching more um, complex drawing methods, right? I'm teaching you how to yeah. proportion. And so that I realized as I pulled this subject out, oh my God, it's perfectly divided. This is a great subject for but, doing the divisions. So so you did a water a watercolor. So watercolors scare me the most, probably because yeah. they're the least forgiving uh, right. of all the painting. Yes. And you did a watercolor of a reindeer that I really wanted to do because I'd actually been in the Arctic and I'd seen reindeer and I love them. They're amazing. <laughs> and and so I gridded it all out mm -hmm. and I did the little subgrids you had uh -huh. and then I did something wrong. Right. I think because I, I didn't have a printout. I was using the computer screen. Right. And I don't know what happened, but I screwed something up. And I realized that this was like an hour and a half into the class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I I just bailed. I just like- Right, you're like, I can't do this, ah. So don't worry, but you did much better today. So but, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, anyway, it's, uh, and so I was, I really wanted to try the cow because of the, not that I knew you were doing a cow, I, got, I signed right. up at the last minute. Right, uh, right. Um, the cow was structured similarly to the water, to the, um, to the whatchamacallit, the yeah. reindeer. It was structured similarly, box, 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 right? Like trying to figure out the heights and the proportions of the boxes. But, it's huge. But I'm glad we didn't fully grid this. Yes. Like the reindeer. I wish we had, you know, I liked, I liked the, I, I seem to like the envelope method a little bit more. Because it, because it's more exact. It's actually, and I'm teaching you how to draw, how how to draw from seeing rather than from gritting. So gritting is this is this crutch. Uh, I use it because it's the quickest way I can show somebody who doesn't know how to draw where things are. Oh, right? totally. Right. It's the quickest. It's efficient. But if anybody is using a different size paper than me or a different proportionally sized paper than me, which is happening all the time because Europe has a different fucking size paper. Everybody has a different size paper. Um, by the way, before I say fuck.